Now we review Stranger Things Season 4, Episode 1, The Hellfire Club. Ladies and gentlemen, most of the fourth season of Stranger Things has come out with two more episodes apparently to drop in July, and I am not going to binge it. It's just too much right now. I have to do a review, try to get a review to you every day. I'm failing at that, so I'm going to have to go episode by episode. I'm very sorry if that offends you, but I saw the first episode, which is the Hellfire Club. And before I go any further into that... Let me, of course, remind you that for for every thousand subscribers I get, I do purchase one of these bracelets or the like from 4Ocean. 4Ocean then pulls a pot of trash out of the ocean uh, every time I do that. Now, Hellfire Club. First off, it starts with utter violence from the past, around 1979, they say. So, yes, you see almost nothing of the violence itself, but a lot of the aftermath. And then we get into the regular lives of the survivors of the battle at Starcourt. So, you know, all the, the four main kids, Eleven, um, Joyce, Winona Wright's character, Max, uh, I forget her last name, and life is crap. Uh, Okay, L has has moved with with uh, what's his name to to California. She is doing terrible in school because you know being a uh, uh, super telepath with uh, telekinesis doesn't apparently make you smart, and she's being bullied, which is weird. And um, the rest of the the boys there have fallen back into their D and D roots which involves the Hellfire Club. But, you know, the, uh, the the one minority of the group is doing the basketball game, and the Hellfire Club has a gaming session tonight, so they need a stand-in, which is not a thing. Uh, and, um, yeah. Biggest problem with this episode is that it is entitled The Hellfire Club. And... It's not about the Hellfire Club. It's a should have been entitled Catching Up With Everybody because that's what we're doing is we're catching up with everybody. We're, we're seeing all the key players in their roles and another weak point of this particular episode is if you have not seen the previous seasons, you're lost. The episode does not stand on its own. It is not a singular or multiple plots building towards something important. It is just, again, there, okay? So, again, like, I've played D&D, &D, and I've even been the guy that had to go to work and not finish the game. And you just had somebody roll for me and finish the game, and that's just how it is. There's not a lot to say there, okay? We don't get much of a look at the other members of the Hellfire Club, this group of role players who apparently get together every now and again and geek out. Although we do know that the the main guy of the Hellfire Club is a 20-something loser who sells drugs and still goes to high school. So he's been held back for two years. And there you have it. Now Max is really grieving from the loss of her brother. We find this out, but it's not um, a major plot point. It, it covers her story for this episode, but it's not a major plot point. And then, well, the whole thing ends in a kind of violence. I don't want to go too much into spoiler territory here, but there is a slight spoiler at this point. You wind up with a character that I believe was present in some of the uh, the media for this already that looks like if Freddy Krueger had his way with the endoskeleton of that splitting Terminator from the last Terminator movie, you know the one without the nose? 
It's like, it's not quite Freddy Krueger had his way with Skeletor. It's Freddy Krueger had his way with that endoskeleton thing. Almost Skeletor, but not quite, not quite Skeletor. And it has essentially the, the Freddy powers with the look of Skele, Skele, endoskeletor, endotechnoskeletor, and that's the character. That's all we really get about the character. Character-wise, yeah, I, I've seen people say it's an homage to Freddy Krueger. I personally think it's more of a rip-off. I mean, I know Freddy Krueger was very 80s, but, uh, again, the point of this episode is the first maybe 10 minutes are important, the last 20 minutes are really good, and the stuff in the middle is just kind of there, all right? So, I mean, if you're a Stranger Things fan, you're going to watch the whole thing anyway. But... I am going to have to warn anybody who has not seen the previous seasons or doesn't remember them well, you're pretty much going to have to watch at least the last season to remember who these people are and how they're connected with each other. I mean, again, meh. I am disappointed. I think I was disappointed, if I remember correctly. I was disappointed with the first episode of the last season of Stranger Things. So this, it's kind of a slow burn. And hey, look, guys, A24, slow burns. And I know that because they're slow burns, I'm not a big fan of their movie. I don't know why everybody thinks they're so awesome. But, you know, I mean, I respect that they're well made and often use interesting techniques and uh, powerful camera angles and all that sort of stuff. But again, I'm not a big fan of the slow burn. Slower movies kind of, you know, just bore me. And that's one of those things about, you know, good writing is pop, 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 get as much information to the audience as possible, and explain things, you know? And that's always different when there's, or difficult when there's this much to explain. But just remember that in the last seasons, you know, we had uh, Demi Gorgon. And the Mind Flare, and the Mind Flare trying to enter our reality. This season you've got Terminator Freddy Krueger. And he's just not as scary to me. Okay? So there's that, there's that thing, is that um, this episode introduces what may or may not be the main antagonist who has a distinctive look to him and uh, a deep and gravelly voice and all that sort of stuff. But, again, slow burn. Hard for me to get through. But that's just my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. Now I am going to go and watch the second episode, which, sadly, I believe, will hold more high school issues and not enough violence and gore. So, yes... I mean, it's a Netflix show. Couldn't we see a little more of Winona Ryder? She's still an attractive woman. I'm not saying she needs to go naked, but, you know, she could dress more attractive. Salutations, Plebeians! It is I, Stephen Miller, emissary and advisor to his dark orange lordship and the real President Donald Trump, reminding you to comment on and like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, or I will suck out your eyes and feed them to my two tarantulas, Meredith and Red Bill! Ha <laughs> ha!